you very much for being here for this talk. So I guess I must speak forever since the previous speaker is not here. So you fought yourself a little bit extra time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's about uh, tuberculosis disease and the way to uh, prevent this disease through vaccination. There is a lot of uh, development in this area. I'm surprised there is no talk about TB vaccine development in this conference. And uh, so it's a, a non-genetic approach to improve the tuberculosis vaccine. And uh, this uh, study was developed by uh, Angela Liao, my uh, long-suffering PhD student. So uh, a quick uh, uh, information about tuberculosis. I, I, I'm sure most of you are aware about this devastating disease. It's caused by a, a bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or MTB, which uh, is uh, transmitted uh, by uh, uh, aerosol particles. It's, uh, it's hard to prevent when you live in crowded area, or, uh, I mean, washing your hands or those precautions, they're, they're not gonna help to prevent transmission of this invisible particle from one infected uh, person to another one. So the bacteria uh, move into the lung and infect alveolar macrophage, which uh, have uh, phagocytic capacity to ingest this bacterium. The role of the macrophage, of course, is to protect us against any invading uh, organism. But in this case, the bacterium succeeded to hide in small vesicle inside the macrophage called the uh, phagosome and uh, deploy different mechanism while inside the macrophage to attenuate uh, innate and adaptive immune function of uh, the macrophage. So uh, TB is the second leading cause from an infectious pathogen and it causes about, it, it kills about 400,000 people every day and most of uh, these people are vaccinated. We do have a vaccine against TB. It's uh, a BCG. I mean, most of you have been vaccinated with BCG. And maybe you don't know that it's one of the first vaccine of the uh, uh, 20th century uh, developed at the Institut Pasteur in France by two scientists, Carmet and Guerin. And it was just an accidental uh, attenuation of uh, Embovis, Mycobacterium embovis, which by itself derive from MTV through a long, long process of uh, deletion of pieces of gene. So the difference between BCG and MTV is the loss of about uh, 400 gene. That's what is visible when you do sequencing, but which, which is not visible is genes that are present in BCG, common to MTB, but not expressed because of uh, when uh, BCG evolved from MTB, it lost uh, different component of secretion mechanism. So the, 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 the gene is inside BCG, but no protein expression outside. So BCG is a, a wonderful vaccine and it's uh, help protecting newborn from uh, disseminated uh, tuberculosis, especially meningeal TB. And uh, the limitation is that it doesn't uh, protect very efficiently uh, in uh, pulmonary TB in adults, which is one of the most frequent TB cases. So, <laughs> There is a lot of development in this area, and there are two approaches. Mm -hmm. So either uh, live vaccine by either improving the current BCG or attenuating viral MTB via deletion of major viral factor. The other possibility is subunit vaccine. They can be delivered as a recombinant protein with adjuvant, and uh, you, you I've seen so many talk about adjuvant, so this area is promising in, in TB uh, vaccine development also. 
Another possibility is uh, delivery via non-replicating vector. And uh, uh, just to let you know that uh, one of the most advanced vaccine that have been tested in clinical trial during all this period after BCG is uh, uh, a viral uh, delivery, uh, viral derived vaccine uh, called Oxford MVA85A, which is uh, a modified vaccine by Ankara expressing one of the major MTB antigen called antigen 85A. This antigen 85A is present in BCG but not secreted in sufficient quantities. So these vaccines, as I said, have been tested and uh, People are, were holding their bread during the, the trial because it was the first trial in one century. And uh, the vaccine was well tolerated. That's good news. But uh, no efficacy have, was shown in terms of protection against virulent MTB. So I believe, and many, uh, Many investigators believe that uh, reshaping BCG is one of the best options to consider. And for the simple reason that BCG has an excellent safety record, it has been delivered to about 1 billion uh, people with no or very little side effects. So if we're able to maintain the safety level of BCG while improving it, I mean, going into clinical trial will, will be much, much easier than uh, attenuating the viral name TB. So, <laughs> different way again here to uh, improve BCG, and they're all genetic-based method, uh, based on delivery of uh, a plasmid encoding either specific MTB antigen that are not expressed or very little expressed in BCG, uh, or uh, modifying BCG to express some regulator of the antigen presentation function, uh, like listeriolysin, for instance, which uh, improve uh, class one antigen presentation. In my lab, we developed the BCG expressing catepsin S to improve MSC class one presentation. We developed uh, BCG expressing active caspase three to improve apoptosis and. Uh, uh, antigen presentation too. <coughs> the limitation here that I am facing too is the limited uh, efficiency and stability of gene expression via uh, uh, plasmid, I mean nucleic acid complementation. And there is also a concern with the safety. I mean, when you manipulate BCG with those uh, plasmid, you always introduce uh, a resistance marker for selection. And uh, it's often very hard to remove that resistance marker. And for some plasmid, I mean, the non-replicative plasmid, you cannot remove it. <coughs> so we, we're thinking about another approach, non-genetic approach, very simple. I mean, everybody can, can, can do that. It's uh, do just simple quick surface bioattenuation with BCG. You mix BCG with commercial biotin and the whole surface is bioattenuated. And then you came with a protein of interest. And here you can add not only one, but a combination of protein. It could be antigens, and it could be antigen plus uh, modul modulator of antigen presentation. And you add uh, an avidin tag to this uh, protein, and, and you have a, a bacteria expressing protein of interest without any piece of extra gene. So this is not novel technique. I didn't invent this technique. I got inspired from a presentation given by uh, uh, ESMA uh, from uh, yeah, Shirwan Lab in Las Vegas. Uh, they introduced uh, for the first time in 2002 this uh, technique. Uh, they're using a surface di display of protein uh, that involves generation of chimeric protein with streptavidin. 
and by accumulation of cells, they call it surface decoration. And they use uh, this approach uh, with uh, the fast ligand and uh, strepavidin uh, fusion with fast ligand. And they demonstrate that it's efficient in blocking rejection of grafts. And I think they're going into very serious clinical trials. So that's where we got inspired. The only difference is, uh, I will come later to that, we're not using the streptavidin, the regular streptavidin and I will explain later on. So first, uh, let me talk about the biotinylation quickly. So we use a flow cytometry to, to the quantitation of this uh, uh, part of the study. Uh, and the limitation again here, when you use flow cytometry to analyze bacteria, is that the bacteria, they fall always in the background area. You cannot distinguish the bacteria from the small particles that are in buffers, etc. So. We introduce uh, a DS red gene in, in BCG and it can be discriminated from the noise. And with this BCG, we did quick uh, uh, dose response to see the optimal dose for bioaccumulation, which is in the range of uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 uh, millimolar. We uh, analyzed the effect of the bioaccumulation on the uh, growth of the bacterium in culture media, no effect. And more importantly, the growth of the bacterium inside the macrophage. And you can see here, no effect. Why we did that, I mean, we'll, the, the issue with BCG modification is, is the safety. So we don't want to convert an attenuated BCG in a virulent one, okay? So yeah, the, the, the avidin. So uh, uh, previous authors, they use uh, uh, streptavidin, uh, which uh, once uh, expressed with protein, it gives uh, a tetramer uh, of uh, avidin plus protein of interest. We don't want tetramer. The reason we don't want tetramer, we, uh, sorry. <coughs> we don't want bacterial aggregation. So we, uh, we, in collaboration with uh, uh, Veza from University of Tampa, uh, he designed for us uh, uh, and, and improved a version of monomeric uh, uh, avidin that he developed with uh, these punctual uh, mutations. And important point here, we end up with a low affinity, about a million times lower affinity than the streptavidin. <coughs> which will allow us for a slow release of the antigen from the BCG surface once ingested by uh, macrophageal dendritic cells. Okay? The, the normal uh, streptavidin has about 10 minus 15 uh, molar and it's almost irre irreversible. And uh, so these, uh, the, the, the piece of gene encoding this uh, monomeric avidin, we put it in an, an uh, just a stupid uh, expression vector from in vitro gene called gateway P destination. We put it here inside to end up with P17 avidin. And uh, with uh, uh, one uh, uh, LR clonase reaction, there is a key to the all this. So you, you put your gene of interest in, in, uh, uh, in uh, the P donor. So the reason we chose this approach is that there are so many ORF already uh, uh, in, in databases or, or in, uh, in in vitro gene, uh, you can just buy them and, and, and end up with whatever you want in terms of uh, uh, avid infusion protein. <coughs> so uh, then we use this uh, uh, technique with uh, with OVA. We use the surrogate antigen of albumin to develop the study. And uh, here by facts, we, we analyze the expression of the, the or surface decoration with this fusion protein. Here is normal BCG uh, exposed to AVI OVA. There is minor signal. And this is the biotinylated BCG exposed to AVI uh, OVA. And you can see the shift of the, the signal. And uh, also this modification at the surface, did it, it didn't modify too much the uptake 
by the, the macrophage. The bacteria get ingested by the, the target. And uh, once inside the uh, macrophage, we were happy to see that uh, the bacterium here, we use again DS red bacteria to, 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 to do some confocal studies. And we stain for avidin uh, to localize uh, avidin uh, of albumin. And you can see some dots here uh, showing that the protein is being kind of exported and of course, for publication, this is not sufficient. We did some electron microscopy, and you can see here different dots of uh, albumin that are uh, uh, distant from the, the vacuole containing the bacterium, the phagosome. And as expected, these uh, uh, exported uh, antigen from BCG uh, we can see it here, co-localizing with MHC class two molecule, which indicate that the presentation process is ongoing. And same observation were done with uh, MHC class one molecule. By the way, those, the mechanism of uh, uh, class one dependent antigen presentation involved the fusion of uh, the ER components with the phagosome, and you can see here uh, complete fusion of ER containing MHC class one with the phagosome. So then we, uh, <coughs> Angela and uh, uh, her friends, they went into animal studies. So they immunized uh, uh, animal with PCG decorated with OVA as a surrogate antigen. And we, they look at for antigen specific uh, T cells and for antigen specific uh, uh, cytokine secreting cells. So we use uh, OVA class one and class two epitope. We synthesize this, this uh, segment and we make it infusion with uh, monomeric avidin. So here, uh, here is the, the, the data. So uh, the upper panel is BCG wild type uh, versus BCG expressing or decorated with the uh, AV OVA. And here is the uh, frequency of positive cells uh, using the tetramer uh, technology to detect uh, positive T cells uh, that are specific for the uh, OVA class two epitope. So to uh, get kind of proof of principle of this technology, we did a little bit more uh, complicated or complex experiment here. We use uh, a bacterium that has a plasmid encoding for surface protein called P19 in fusion with ovalbumin. So here we have a genetic expression of the surrogate ova antigen at the surface. And here we have a bacterium with a plasmid encoding surface P19 alone that has been biotinylated and exposed to uh, RV uh, OVA. So the, the idea here is to, ex to compare genetically expressed antigen and surface decoration. And you can see that the signal are almost uh, similar in terms of induction of specific uh, T cells. So uh, I go quick here. I mean, uh, those are cytokine responses. Uh, again, uh, comparing uh, genetically expressed OVA and surface decorated BCG with OVA. I mean, we have similar responses uh, for uh, CD4 positive uh, cells expressing uh, antifrom gamma and TNF. Uh, CD8, I mean, the signal is, is, is low, but uh, the difference are are significant compared to the control PBS. So, <laughs> and uh, uh, to start uh, our, uh, I mean, working seriously on this, we, we, we get excited with this uh, approach and we start to look at the two uh, MTB antigen. And one of them, is, which is very popular, is AZ6 uh, antigen, MTB 6 kilo an early secreted antigen not expressed, not secreted by uh, 
uh, BCG and uh, was shown on many occasions that it, 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 it can promote uh, the production of uh, T helper cell response. So as uh, you can see here, I mean, with this tetramer approach, I mean, I, I don't know how to explain this. There is high background, uh, but uh, you know, everything is relative in biology. I mean, we just compare this to this and see if there is a significant difference. And uh, we have, uh, effectively, we have a specific T cell response to uh, Z6 at the surface of PCG. So in conclusion, uh, our uh, surface corrected BCG is able to induce uh, 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 a TCR response in animal. And uh, next is to challenge uh, these animals with virulent MTB and more especially the drug resistant MTB, which are the, the, the problem in, in uh, global control of MTB. And, uh, I don't know, if you see me here, you might see me here in the next <laughs> conference. If you don't see me, the image didn't work. <laughs> so a very interesting approach. Uh, any questions? Have you thought about how you're going to calibrate how much antigen um, is on each particle? So. interested in combining uh, catepsin S and uh, antigen 85 for uh, something like that or, or caspase. So we start, we start experimenting in, in that direction. It's just playing with the concentration. I mean, we, we saturate the surface of, of BCG, that's one, and then playing with the doses, we can come to satisfactory expression. So do you have any idea of, um, for each, um uh, BCG particle. How ma how many molecules can you attach? I mean, I mean, to the uh, yeah. We 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 we're doing some quantitation by electron microscopy. We're working on that to see how many biotin molecule yeah. we have on the on the surface, and that that will give us idea about uh, what you said about quantifications. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes, uh, in the front. That's good. That's that. That's good point. The bacteria will divide. The antigen won't divide. Exactly. It will. It will. It will go slowly down. It's. Uh, it appears at disadvantage, but uh, more and more we. There are people that don't agree with that, because uh, we we start with the idea that uh, we need a replicating bacteria to induce uh, a good uh, immunity to TB. But it appears that these non-replicating bacteria for a long period, uh, even after inducing, inducing an immune response, they're still there. If they're still there, that means they don't induce protective immune response against themselves. Why they persist? So there is a question about that, and it seems that BCG, BCG was found uh, even after 30 years in some patient due to persistence. And to me, if they persist, that means they don't in induce uh, 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 efficient immunity to eliminate them, themselves. So how they can eliminate the, the, the real pathogen, the MTB? So I think that, and, and uh, animal, animal studies will, 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 will demonstrate that I can't say anything for now. I mean, what we have seen is that we induce an, an uh, an immune response, uh, and the persistence, like uh, as you said, is, is questionable. And uh, the only way to demonstrate that uh, we don't need uh, a long-term persistence is uh, by doing the challenge with the virulent bacteria. So, a question at the back. And one of the problems you always get with these coupling ideas, like the biotin, is that the biotin coupling to the In itself, that coupling is incredibly immunogenic. So 
when you immunize something, your, all your immune responses against that entity, this very immunogenic. I don't, think, I don't think we will get response against the biotin. No, not against the biotin. The biotin is coupled to the... Um, so, the, yeah, I mean, there are two stages. First is, uh, is, uh, uh, is surface loading with biotin as much as possible, and you have... Uh, yes, that reaction, so you're reacting biotin with the PCGN. Yeah, yeah. And that coupling entity mm -hmm. is very immunogenic. Much more immunogenic than many other things often. Find that? Uh, but but this, but uh, so. we, we we've been looking to specific uh, yeah yeah I mean uh, I I agree with you we should have introduced a control just BCG biotinated in the experiment yeah yeah that's your point yeah. yeah thank you but that's probably still a positive I mean if anything you do that that's not harmful that increases immunogenicity even by tenylation. Is, is a positive for your vaccine, I guess, if it makes well, it more effective. That's what Duking wants. It's a different system, though. Yeah. Slightly different system. Mm -hmm. We ended up with 90% of the antibody response was directed at the coupling entity, not the antigen. I mean, we've been, we've been looking specifically to, to uh, I mean, we've been looking to T cells that are specific to the OVA when we use the OVA, and we, we were look into specific T cells for is it 6 when we uh, use uh, is it 6 but still we need that control and we never know we never know what happened yeah and i guess what you're saying is if you were trying to induce a neutralizing antibody response that's probably a bad thing but in this case maybe if you're just trying to induce a T cell response exactly yeah you know even if you do get antibodies to that coupling that that may not be uh, a negative Certainly very interesting, so thank you.